Martins. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to another episode of Grassroots Chat, episode 14. We have a special guest in the building. I know it's not the normal faces you're used to seeing, but before we get to the special guest, of course, we have all the way from Southampton that looks like he's a medical doctor, AK-47. <laughs> we have Mr. Thanos, always fresh and clean from the north side. Of course, we have the man that's so calm, so gentle, like Pochettino, Karim B. And of course, the very, very, very happy one, AKA the angry one, Mike N. And of course, the special guest in the building, the Liverpool fan, boo, Mr. Mark N. Yes, yeah, I mean, guess yeah, he might be related to somebody in here, but we'll share. No, we're there. not doing that. Manic Marks, but let me introduce myself, Grassroots Chats. We got everybody in here. I'm the Grassroots Chats cousin. I'm yes. That's cousin. I'm visiting. Part there you go. Me. Thank you for visiting us, man. Nice to have you on. No problems, brother. All right. So, Liverpool, man, let's have a quick intro. Liverpool fan, how do we. How are you seeing your season so far? Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting season. Um, I do think when it's all said and done, we'll definitely finish within the top three. Um, despite having our midfield issues, I still think we're very capable of winning the title. However, it's going to be a very tough battle between, I would say, probably more so City and Liverpool. Um, Chelsea did extremely well at the moment, but I just feel like coming towards the end of the season, they might start to fall off a little bit. You know, um, Tuchel's not that used to being that high yet, you know what I mean? So, um, Wills might fall right. off at some point, you know what I mean? Well, not in the Premier League, not in the Premier League. Different different animal, different animal. The only thing I can say about Chelsea, Chelsea are looking solid, but um, I don't know. I just got this feeling that at some point the wheels will fall off. Everybody has a bad bad patch during the season. Chelsea haven't really had theirs yet. Do you know what I mean? Neither of Liverpool, to mm-hmm. be fair. But... Well- so, based on what you've seen so far, so looking at obviously all of us on this wonderful grassroots chat, uh-huh. we also put different teams. Yeah. How do you see? Have you seen Tottenham this season? Um, Tottenham. Um, uh, what, <laughs> come on, why are you doing that to me? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a bad guy. Listen, Tottenham. No, I feel sorry for. Let me let, let me start positively with Tottenham because you lot are down, <clears> and I'm not one to kick kick a team when they're down. So I feel sorry for Nuno. I feel Nuno um, has something about him. Maybe the process of him being the sixth choice manager never really favoured him. Um, it was eight, so, eight, eight, eight. Oh, wow. Nine. Wow. One, wow. wow. Nine. Okay, so it was never going to work, let's be honest. So Daniel Levy is just playing um, God up there um, with, with Tottenham Football Club. You'd think he was the actual owner, bearing in mind he's just a director. I, I don't know why the owners are letting him get away with this madness. He's just sacking people left, right and centre and Tottenham have no direction um, there's, there's nobody knows what they're doing. What are they doing? What, what, what are Tottenham doing really right now? I don't know. Well, good question. I'm sure Karim will answer you at some point. Mm. What do you? What, what? What can you say about the beautiful guy from Southampton? <laughs> I've got no problems with Southampton whatsoever. Southampton funded most of our club's success, so I'm happy with Southampton. <laughs> and of course, um, the beautiful Gunners, the Arsenal boys. Um, Arsenal. Um, I wish I'd been on last season because I'd have had so much more to say. But um, <laughs> but Arsenal are coming up now. Now, credit to Arsenal. Um, Arteta is doing his thing for an inexperienced manager. Um, he's starting to find his feet. He looks like he's starting to understand um, his players a bit better or his either that or his philosophy is starting to um, come through and shine through the players now. Um, obviously, you can see the younger guys coming through. So... Maybe he's one of them managers that do better with younger players. Um, maybe he ain't got the balls. Sorry, can I say that on this channel? Feel maybe, free. Feel maybe, free. Maybe you don't have the gonads to look to, to look after the big boys. You know, Nico Jones. There you go. Nico <laughs> Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, I, so I, I would ask you about Man United, but there's no point. No point. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Let's talk oh, about Man United. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh. I tell you what, we'll talk about Man United at some point. At mm. some point. However, <laughs> sticking to Liverpool, sticking to Liverpool, oh, yeah. a legend is oh, back. Like a pin in it. Iman, okay. Imanda has 504 appearances, scored 120 goals. Mm. Wonderful captain. So that's not Jamie Carragher, is it? No, it's not. Definitely <laughs> not. However, we we'll welcome back Stevie G as the newly appointed manager for Villa. Yes. So before Stevie G was given the Rangers job, <clears throat> I was one of those that said, obviously, as a player, you can trans, you can go from being wonderful and be given the opportunities a lot of other players are not given. Yeah. But yeah. well, he went to Rangers, had a good time, um, actually went the season unbeaten, and then finally mm-hmm. wrestled the title from Celtic. So now he has been given the opportunity at Villa after getting rid of Dean Smith. 
So I'll start with I'll start with I'll start with you, Karim. What are Stephen G's chances as a Villa manager? Do you think, first of all, do you think he will change the style of play? Do you think he can manage the players they have? Do you think he will do any different than Dean Smith? Um, when I found out about that point, when I thought to myself, like, it's, it's it's a no brainer for him. Obviously, he's making his return back into the Premier League. He probably knows it just as well as any other manager in the Premier League, having played in there for such a long time and actually smashed smashed it as a Liverpool player. Unfortunately, he didn't win the, the Premier League, but uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, 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 he did that well Wait, 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 wait. Are we gonna, is this what the channel was? Are we going to do yes. that Liverpool is about? <laughs> That's what it's about. Okay, cool. I'm just, I'm just trying to understand the process here. Because when I start bringing out my guns, I don't want nobody talking to me. What be me? It'll be for him. Mm, carry on Tottenham. But um carry on cotton yeah. ball story. Go here you go, here you go, here you go. Mm. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I think he's gonna do a, a very good job there, to be honest. I don't think he has anything to lose. I feel like he's a nice stepping stone for him. He's not going there like Frank Lampard did and expect top four and Champions League and stuff. So it's a good stepping stone for him. I think he's he's got nothing to lose. He might as well throw his cards at it, see what he can do, see what he can make out of the players and, and go from there. Well, AK, Karim talks about stepping stone for Villa, um, for Stevie G at Villa. So stepping stone to what? If he does well here, is he going to go somewhere else? Is this is this keeping him in a nice tune for a bigger job out there? Or is it, when you look at his managerial, you know, success, going on beating in the Scottish League is not an easy thing to do, especially with Rangers resources. But as Karim has said, is this a case of, it's a nice place to start, keep them in the league, and then, but I'm sure they will want progression. They will want something bigger. What yeah, definitely, think? definitely. Um, he's, he's going to be coaching better players, of course. Like um, the, the players in Aston Villa are much way better than the players he had in Rangers. Uh, so I expect this to be a stepping stone for him to land his um, dream job, which is, you know, <laughs> no, you don't need to guess, uh, to land the Liverpool job when club uh, eventually leaves. Um, so it's going to be interesting because we have Steven G, the player, and Steven G, the manager. I still think there are still question marks around Steven G, the manager, uh, just because the SPL is a different league entirely compared to the Premier League. Uh, but, but obviously, um, Aston Villa will give him an opportunity and a platform to showcase his managerial skills. So, Steve, how, how well does he have to do? Where does he place Aston Villa? Because two people on here have mentioned stepping stone. So how well do you think he has to do to actually see Villa as a stepping stone for any bigger job? Does he have to keep them in the top eight? Does he qualify for Europe? How well does he have to do to finally remove the Stevie G, the footballer, Stevie G, the manager? I think if he keeps them in the top 10, um, then he would do a good job. Um, if, if he goes above top eight and get European qualification, I think that would um, even be, people see that as he's done a very, very good job. Um, and I must say, I, I was surprised at the appointment. They happened so quick, um, especially after last week when I said, ah, oh, Villa don't look like they got a plan. Oh, I was just but, about to hit but, you with but, that. But, so, but, so, sorry, Steve, I was about to call you. <laughs> I watch grassroots chats, so I watched that. <laughs> And I was thinking, correct yourself, brother. Yeah, but I, but mm. I, I was surprised that they done they made the move so quick. Um, it's a it's a bold move for him because um, he could have just sat in comfort at Rangers and just waited for the Liverpool job to come down. Because uh, how, for me, how 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 how's he going to come down if he's still managing Rangers? It's not going to no. It, so so for example, if he stayed at Rangers for another two, three, four years until Klopp leaves. Nah, that, he, was, that, was, that, that would have been comfortable for him to do. Nah, yeah, nah, but, nah, but, but for him to leave... Where's the portfolio? To, but he doesn't... I don't think he necessarily needs a portfolio to get be considered and get the well, Liverpool job. Why do we think well, that, though? Why do we think that? As a Liverpool fan, I've got to ask the outsiders, why do you think that, though? Why, why doesn't Stephen Gerrard have to prove his credentials like every other man has to prove their credentials? Especially, because, after watching for, the car for, crash, especially after watching the car crash that was Frank Lampard. Yeah, but first football all, players, first, isn't it? That's what happened. First of all, before you answer that question, Frank Lampard was in a car crash. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. He did well, actually. He did well. Number yeah. two, number two. I was going to ask Mike. This thing is simple. So, Steve, you have mentioned uh, Rangers are not doing particularly as wonderful. I mean, yes, they are, they are what they are second, which you would expect them to be mm. in the Scottish league. And as Mike has pointed out, 
where is the portfolio? Why does everybody think it's an automa automatic automatic appointment if Klopp leaves? So once again, I've asked Mike this. Do people think, oh, he would have gotten a Liverpool job if it did well at Rangers because of Stevie G, the player, or Stevie G, the manager? The old Liverpool, yeah, they would have taken anybody. Yeah, especially Gerard. He man didn't have to do nothing. He could have not even managed. So this is the old Liverpool, old Liverpool five years, six years ago. Yeah. Liverpool now, that's won titles and stuff, or eight out at least, yeah. And, and, and the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, well, you won that before. And also has a has a defined style of play, and some of the best, well, the best player in the world at the moment. You can't just give it to any man out of um, being out of sentiment. If that doesn't make sense. I agree. Yeah, that's it, that's it. And also, to add to that, Steve, I'm confused why Steve's, uh, why Steve's confused, because Steve's here now on Greek grassroots. But if flipping AFA, if AFTV come asking him now, come now, come now, tomorrow night, man, man will be on AFTV straight away. So that's the, that, that's the same thing as, that's the same thing. Who would not? Yes, you would, don't lie. Stephen Gerrard, Stephen Gerrard, Stephen Gerrard, Stephen Gerrard, Stephen Gerrard could have easily stayed at Rangers, kept, kept competing for the league title, getting them into European qualification and increasing his European experience. Then coming down to Aston Villa, where he's actually going to be battling to stay at the bottom of the Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. I was surprised that he he took the job. It says a lot about him as a as what he wants to be as a manager. He yeah, actually wants to, so, so he wants to establish player. himself. So, he wants so, to establish himself as a manager. So he Steve, doesn't want to just take the easy route. Steve, um, I'm Mr. Thanos. I'm I'm just trying to be clear here. Are you saying that um, that Stevie should have stayed at Rangers and established himself there first, then moved to Villa before Liverpool moved? Or are you saying that he should have stayed at Rangers waiting for uh, no, no, I'm, 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 saying, I'm saying the fact that he took the Villa, Villa job shows me him. he wants to establish himself as okay. a very good manager. Okay. Because he, he could have taken the easy route and stayed at Rangers. Mm. And then he will be considered for the Liverpool job no matter when it becomes available. It's like Arsenal. Arsenal fans always talking about Henri, Vieira. Mm. What, what great CV credentials have they had? Um, managerial credentials have they had? And that's since Wenger's left. Hold on. Guys, they've been rumoured. Let me, hold on. Hold let on. me hold ask on. one second, one second. I ask, so, um, Michael, I'll come back to you. Um, Mark, so yes. being a Liverpool man and all that story, what, would you be comfortable seeing that automatically Stevie G would, have, would be the replacement for Klopp if Klopp decides to step down? Is that nope. something you're comfortable with? Nope, nope. Who would you? Who would be your choice? Um, I couldn't tell you that. Klopp's contract is Klopp's got a contract for another three years, so anything could happen in the space of three years. But to just say that Steven Gerrard is an automatic shoe in once Klopp leaves is ridiculous to me. What has he done at managerial level to prove that he deserves a job as big as Liverpool, um, where Liverpool are right now? Let's not forget what happened to Liverpool before in the past after um, Kenny Dalglish. When we took on Mr. Sones, Mr. Pogba himself, you understand? <laughs> yeah, that was the demise of Liverpool. So the club yeah, would be stupid true. to not learn from that mistake. You I've got, I've got a question for you, right? Just one direct question. Mm -hmm. So, assuming club uh, resigns tomorrow, give me one name. Who would you who do you want to wow. be the manager of Liverpool? Wow, wow, that's 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 a, that's a <laughs> tough one. Um, I'm sure Liverpool Football Club have. Have, have greater minds than me in terms of scouting for, for, for managers. I couldn't get that off the top of my head like that. That's too on the spot for me. But Gerard would not be my first choice. I'm looking for somebody with pedigree who's done it, either in another league, in another top league. Um, even if you haven't crossed that line, but you've come close or you pushed the, the big wigs close, you know, that level of management. It, 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 it has to be either A, an elite manager, they're about, or a B, an, a mercurial talent, like someone like, you know, this guy could could do it if he's got the tools. That's not Gerard yet. You're we're still we're, we're still basing it on Stevie G on the pitch. Stevie G on the pitch, yeah. I, I'll give man the, the title however, all day long. But, but however, sometimes you need, to, you need to understand that it works for different people in different ways. So there are certain players for there are certain players that because of their affiliation and love lifetime achievement oh, they had with the club. Oh, it, it whether you like it or not, it works differently with, with certain players. It works for Pep. I think okay. personally, one, if, if the club are one second, one second, one second. If the club are in crisis, yes, but Liverpool are not in crisis. I agree. However, in one, he worked for Pep. Xavi is a new one. You need to remember, Steven Gerrard was also successful with the under 23s in Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. Now, but my question here is: Steve has mentioned 
he could have taken the easy route, stayed in Rangers, managerial experience. Mm -hmm. Now, when you coach other Celtic on Rangers, two things are guaranteed. And this this wasn't even guaranteed for Rangers way back because of the resources. They went down, mm -hmm. they came back up. So the easy way route, easy way is like, if he won the Scottish League continuously, got to a higher, higher state in Europe, then maybe the experience. But winning the Scottish League is looked at as normal for Celtic and Rangers. So it, there's nothing to, it, it now falls down to how would you actually win it? Brendan Rodgers for Celtic wiped, I mean, he broke records, won everything, blah, blah, blah. He saw an opportunity with Leicester and he took it. Mm -hmm. So as you said, I like that he's challenging himself. However, staying in Rangers doesn't make it simple because he's still being criticized this season when they could they didn't start well. But Mike, what do you want to say? I'm saying, with um, Brendan Rodgers, for example, he's followed a similar path, right? But even before that, <laughs> Brendan Rodgers had a definitive Liverpool. style of style of play. Not forget Liverpool. Before that, he had a definitive style of play. People knew what he's about, and he was he had plaudits for that. What what? So even if he hasn't won anything, blah blah blah, you can say, well, he's got a great style of play. Maybe he just needs resources. What we're gonna say about CBG? Or well, in terms of his, in terms of his team's DNA or whatever you want to call it, he, he's won the FA Cup now, actually. Brandon okay, Rogers. yeah, no, I mean, but before, 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 okay. we were that. yeah, but with CBG, we're just saying, yeah, he won, he won the league with Rangers, but how? Well, okay, yeah, he went unbeaten, but ultimately, it's a dead league. Let's let's be honest, man. So he yep. has to. Yes, but they look at it. Rangers, could Rangers it would be tenth at best in the Premier League. Could it be? Could it be that based on resources Rangers have now, and based on the fact that he went unbeaten, he also stopped Celtic from winning their tenth straight league. Could it be that he implemented a style that fitted the players and Rangers and you could see that he had some managerial impact on the team? Before, uh, Karim, what do you think about that? Would you answer that question and let's assume you didn't hire Conte, would you take Steven Gerrard for Tottenham? I wouldn't take Steven Gerrard, no. <laughs> Why? Because as, as everyone's been saying, he hasn't got a managerial experience. As I said before, I feel like Villa is a, is a, is a great, but you're crazy. Great stepping stone for him. I feel like <laughs> things he could. But you got Arteta. What's he doing, bro? Do, what, do, do, do more than Nuno. Anyway, move on. He, he did more than Nuno, but he's not going to do more than Conte. Let's well, he can't do more, can't do anything now that he's dead, is he? He's, Nuno's dead. So, what's the contest? Last man standing. He batted you anyway. twice last year with. with, uh, with so, well, we, we, ladies and gentlemen, we'll come back to this not London derby at some point. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 please let him carry on. I was enjoying it. <laughs> as, I, as, I, as I believe, like, I think he is a good step in the for him. And um, yeah, I, I honestly cannot see him doing any wrong there. If he, if he, obviously, if he stays up and finishes between 8th and 10th, and you know, 8th and 12th, it's, it's a good, it's, it's good for him. This, this season or next season? Premiership experience. We're talking about Gerard here still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think okay, so. Go on. Go on. No, it's not my turn. Go on. Go to, go to. There, there are no turns here. Um, so listen. <laughs> wow. Okay. What, what, Kareem, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? The, okay, so this season should just stay up maybe top eight or whatever. Cool. Yeah. Eight to 12. Next season, with a clean slate, what would be um, Gerard's uh, objective? Improvement from the previous year. Oh, that's it. I don't, think, but, I don't think you can turn around and say, Gerard, we expect Aston Villa to now break into the top six. <clears throat> okay. So basically, wherever they finish this year, they should finish higher than they did last year. So it's just an even kill. There is no plan for route. Literally, he would have two transfer windows to do business in. But he, he, he then has no excuses, really. As long as he improves, you can't really knock him anyways. He's, what, this is, this, how long has he been, how, was he, how long was he manager of Rangers? So like two years? Steven, Steven G was appointed Rangers manager 2018. Um, AK, what do you see as, realistically, what do you, what do you see as Gerard's chances? And where do you see Villa finishing? Yes, I know you haven't seen his style of play or what he wants to play yet. Um, he has, he was, he was kind of lucky in a way to get into Villa just in a nice window international break where he could actually look at the players and get them running. But <clears throat> where do you realistically see them finishing? Do you think he, okay, the question is simple. Do you think he would do better than Dean Smith? No. So we, we need to be very realistic. Uh, the table says that um, Aston Villa is 16th. So literally, they're two points away from relegation. So he doesn't have an easy job. Um, he needs to leave the players' spirits. He needs to get them up and running, like you mentioned. Um, if they can finish 10th, 
like top half of the table. That's a very, very, very good achievement considering the circumstances that they hired him. Okay, Steve, what do you see? So with his experience as I said with Europe and Villa, what do you had what do you see him doing? What impact do you see him actually putting there? I think I think he improved he gets more out of the players than Dean Smith, just because it's a clean slate for him. It's a post-Grealish era, bringing his style of play to the club with the new players. I think he gets, he's got a better opportunity of making it all gel than what Dean Smith ever had, because Dean Smith was trying to battle the Villa with Grealish, who've got them success, bringing in new players, and they weren't playing well. With Gerrard, it's a clean slate. Let's start it all again. Can we, not forget, can we not forget that um, at the end of last season, Greenish wasn't even playing for Villa and they still finished quite high up. Yeah, but um, he's still but team. he's still around the club, isn't he? So your your play is still there. Yeah, but so he's not on the pitch though. He's yeah, not but, affecting the game. Yeah, but he's still affecting the club. The ghost of Greenish is the uh, ones really? he sold, is to me there's still there's still a hangover there. I don't know. Yeah. That's a bit intangible but for I, me. I, I, I just think with with um Gerard coming in, for him it's all clean. No Grealish. I don't think not again. You I, know what I mean, I I don't think that Dean Smith had enough time to um, get over the Grealish loss. Like anything, if you've lost a key player, any any team that's lost their key player will take time to adapt. Um, no, I agree with you. Unfortunately, I said that, I, for, I said that last week. I agree okay, with you. I cool. said that last week. And I unfortunately, see. unfortunately for Smith, he just hasn't had enough time mm. to 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 put extra measures in place or to gel it all together. And mm. um, for me, I, I do my research on that. You know, um, Aston Villa, <laughs> these Aston Villa owners, they're they're quite ambitious, and it just so happened that you know they've obviously had their eye on Gerard. Let's not forget that Christian Perslow is the club director who also served at Liverpool with Gerard. Also, we have. Gary McAllister as Gerard's number two, who also played for Villa. So there's a lot of links there for Gerard to mm -hmm. get in, 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 into the club. So the Villa owners would have been eyeing this up for, for a while. Um, it's a bit coincidental that, you know, Dean Smith has landed a job at Norwich when their managers got sacked. So I don't know. Um, I'm not trying to run conspiracy theory, but, you know, someone must have known something was bubbling under the yeah. surface. So it's, yeah. to me, it seems a lot more calculated than we might think, think that, it, yeah. that it was, in my so, opinion, looking at all the things. But, but, Mike, would you, okay, okay, go on. No, I was going to say, I mean, that's not going to go 100 million from selling Grealish. So they had enough money to buy a, a few players to make the team actually better. So I'm, I'm trying to understand, or I'm, tr I'm struggling to understand why the excuse would be that um, they're trying to get over the loss of Grealish when you've got like a few, better, a few good players in. I get, yeah. I get, I get They've got the Jamaican the winger, which is a very, very brilliant player. His name, man. Put some respect for me. Leon Bailey. Uh, Leon Bailey. Bailey. Sorry, Leon Bailey. Sorry. I get, sorry, I keep laughing because, because see, when, Mike, when, when Mike goes to bounce, Mike, Mike goes... <laughs> He's in school, like he's in school. Crooked finger, Mike. Oh, John, crooked finger, Mike. Mike, no, no, Mike, love it, love it, love it. I watch you on this grassroots chats. We don't want that smoke, bro. Man, try to be decorum things I hear. You might have dissed me. Anyway, listen. What I was gonna say, Dean Smith, right? For me, the hangover. I agree with both of you, with Mark and and Thanos. Yeah. Yes, Grealish affected the team, but then again, why should it affect the team when he wasn't playing? And for me, the reason for that is. He's a, he's a unique style of player, yeah? They've, they've built everything around him. Yeah, they've went and spent 100 million, but those guys aren't Jack Grealish and they're still trying to play as if they had Jack Grealish, but actually you don't. So for me, that's where Dean Smith kind of went a bit, a bit wrong. Let me, um, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. The Aston Villa, um, Thanos mentioned the fact that he feels that the players might, you know, receive Jared in a nicer way. Once again, is this because of Jared? The manager or Gerard the player? Both. And and the question is, why would you why are you still thinking about him as the player? He's not going to be on that pitch. Mm. No, let's have it, it right. Matter. Let, it we're, 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 we're saying this and that about Rangers, but for Gerard, in all fairness, to go to Scotland and bat up the league the way that he did, unbeaten by the way. Um, do you know what I mean? And take the rip the title away from Sox. By the way, which is also under underestimated, you know, when he went to Rangers, his mission would have been to stop Rangers winning their was it 10th on the trot. And he, success, and, and he successfully achieved that. That's not a little bit of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. So again, that's a measure of Stephen Gerrard's character mm -hmm. and his ability. <clears throat> yeah. What we're saying is that it's, it's, we're not discrediting the job that he done at Rangers, but 
at the same yeah. time, when you're trying to move up to the upper echelons, you've got to prove that you can do it at every single level. And that's what he's trying to do now by moving to Villa. For him to so, go and do what he did at Rangers was a big thing. It wasn't a small thing. Let's let's not undermine it. You get me? But no, now, no, no, no. if you're looking for something bigger, you need to go through the motions. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Villa is a good step. Also, Villa, in my opinion, they're like I said, their their owners are quite ambitious. So I can't really see them expecting anything less than a kind of tenth place. They're in or thereabouts. He might get away with with anything just a bit less. But what Gerard doesn't want to be in is in, in a relegation battle. Um, and the thing that Gerard has over Dean Smith is that Gerard has star power. Do you know what I mean? We're all talking about Villa now. I've never seen you lot talk about Aston Villa. Unless well, there's, we, did, there's, we did when Dwayne was there. Okay, they're a side breast team to, like, on this, on this <laughs> show, Ralph. Yeah? But now everybody's <laughs> talking about Villa because Steven Gerrard's there. Do you know what I mean? So, Well, good so, point. Karim, what, what, you seem like you want to say I was, something. I was going to say, like, so I know there's a lot of hype about Aston Villa and, and Gerrard being there, but isn't it the same kind of characteristics with regards to Patrick Vieira at Crystal Palace, would you not expect him to do exactly the same sort of mission? Um, like coming away from America and then coming here and doing exactly the same thing? Um, you wouldn't land him straight in an Arsenal job, would you? Well, say, we, oh, we, we, we had the chance and we took something like our flipping Captain Scarlet, so... <laughs> Well, the thing, the thing, the thing is with this is that, with oh god, the end of the day, as 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 you guys have said it, the comparison will be with the last manager, what he did last season, and then of course let's try and go there and better it. But then once again, people like to see the impact. You can, I mean, now that you mentioned Vieira, you can see Palace is playing a different way from Roy Hodgson, mm-hmm. and it's working. They well, they got a point at Arsenal. They well, they beat Tottenham. They beat Man City. City. They beat Man City. So you can see that you can see the impact. So it'll be regardless of where Villa decide they want to finish or where they want to see. Everybody wants to see what impact, what what play, what are they going to actually play now? And I think that's what he'll be judged on mainly. The star power is there, but we shall see. You know what I'll say quickly. Um, in terms of our generation, so we're looking at managers. So the managers we know that, that are top elite managers, basically we never saw them play. They they might have been bad men, they might not have been, but we hardly saw them play. But now we're getting to a stage where we've seen people play and we remember them as they were and they're now becoming managers. So the expectation sometimes will be, it won't translate like that, is if they were a top boy player, then somehow they're going to be a top boy manager. I mean, that doesn't always work. But the reason we're hyping, oh, Lampard, uh, Gerard, not Arteta, but those two, it's because they were such good players. So sure even. Sorry, sorry. Was it Arteta a good player? Pep was a good player, actually. Good player. Is Arteta even an Arsenal legend? No, he really. nah, he's not. He's not, right. not. But he's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. He, he, didn't he win two FA Cups? He's ever a legend, bro. Team one. I, I mean, I mean there's, only a, there's only a couple of managers that have, um, in the modern era, that have been bad boy players. Klinsman. And, and gone on to be bad boy managers. Um, yeah. You're talking Pep, Zidane. Coleman. Does that make sense? Is he a, is he a bad boy manager, though? He was, he was, he was, he was. What yeah, well, 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 you know, the bad boy manager? Who? Zidane taking a bad boy manager. Zidane taking a bad boy manager. Zidane taking a bad boy manager. Zidane taking a bad First of all, Zidane won. Zidane won. It's easy to turn around and give these men all the messies and the... No, 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 no. Think about it. You could turn around and say, boom. Think about it this way. Think about it this way. Think about it this way. The man was the first man to take Real Madrid to win Champions League back to back. They won four Champions League and two league titles. I, I hear that. I Wait, but so, look at the cards he had to play with. No, man. Put, put some respect on his name, man. But other managers, I'm, other managers, I'm, I'm had, asking, other manage, other managers my... had those cards and they didn't do it. Also, in the modern era, I don't think anybody had defended the Champions League trophy as well. Yeah, Mourinho yeah. had those cards. He didn't do it. Oh, true. So you never know. know. Zizu, you know. Well, speaking, well, speaking about going from bad boy player to bad boy manager, we're going to go to bad boy Dean Smith. The man, oh. the man was at, the man hadn't finished reading his P45 and he was already <laughs> back in, he was already back at the job. Back in the job. So now, him, the question, it is good for him, but the question is here now, realistically, once again, did Dean, is Dean Smith taking this job? And I start, let's, start, let's start with you, AK. Is Dean Smith taking this job with the belief that, you know what, I can save this guy's season? Or is he yeah. taking a job based on, man, I don't want to take a break. This guy's offering me good pay. Um, um, Villa, I'm going to show Villa. Villa didn't think I could do it. So you know what? I'm going to take Puki and put him in the top top half. Does he actually think he can save Norwich season? 
I, I think it's a lot. I think he's, he's trying to prove something to his previous employers. I mean, I can't understand how somebody will lose a job one week and the next week you have another <laughs> job. Like, I, I actually think he needs a break. Normally, myself, I would have just gone, gone on a sabbatical, just take a rest and then recharge my batteries and come back again. Um, also, Norwich have possibly the worst team in the Premier League, possibly. So I can't see, like, he's gone from a hard job to a harder job. You know, so I can't see what magic he want, he would do there to save them from relegation, <laughs> truly. So I, I'm just trying to understand what the appointment was all about. I mean, Mark, the Norwich sacked um, Daniel Fark after they finally won a game. Mm-hmm. So they, he was on there. They didn't win a game. They finally beat Brentford 2-1 and then they sacked him. So they are bottom of the table. I think they have about five points. Mm-hmm. However, does they, 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 do you think Dean Smith actually... First of all, what do you think the owners were thinking? Let's hire Dean Smith. Is it because he was available or it, just, it was the case of, let's just see if somebody can... We needed a manager, so let's get him in. Well, it's Norwich, isn't it? Um, and, you know, they're not really going to be um, top pickings for anyone, to be honest. So, uh, any manager I'm talking about. So, um, I think... Lampard they, was in there for the job. He, he was offensive. in there. He he, yeah, we, I mean, we don't know what happened. What we do know is that Dean Smith got the job. Now, what I can say about Dean Smith, in fairness to Dean Smith, is that he's been with, what, three or four clubs that I can remember, and he's never been relegated in any of his leagues. Um, I think he started with... Um, I think he did... Was it, was it Warsaw? Um, Brentford... By the way, he is almost probably the godfather for that Brentford, uh, for, for Brentford's rides, by the way. Let's not forget that. You know, Brentford are doing relatively well because of um, Dean Smith. And then obviously off the back of that, he took the Villa job and now he's gone to Norwich. But um, my point is that he's never been relegated before. So maybe the owners are banking on that record um, that he'll be able to, um, you know, bring that kind of whatever Dean Smith magic he's got and keep them up. Um, also, Brentford were doing better than Villa, actually, before um, um, Dean Smith took, the, took the Aston Villa job. So yeah, he has credentials. He's just not a... He, I think for where Aston Villa want to go, he's not a big enough name. Um, so he, he doesn't have that commercial appeal. Let's not forget that Villa are European Cup winners, um, Super Cup winners. They, listen, Villa have a fan base. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm not so sure that his sacking was so much as his ability to manage the team as opposed to, you know, the, or, or there's that a little bit, but also the commercial side of it as well. Um, obviously, like I said, Gerard brings a bit more star power to um, Villa. Obviously, he has to deliver in the job, but not bring it back to Gerard and stick it to Dean Smith. As I said, he's he's never been relegated. And um, he's also known for revamping the youth system as well um, at Villa. So maybe they're looking at that and hoping that he can... Pull well, something out it, of the bag. It's, that would be a big look, considering the fact that he has two years. Um, nah, but... basically, they just got rid of the manager. He's available. He's got the minute. He's got experience. That's what happened. That he's looking for pension things because he don't want to be not working. That's it. To be honest. Well, it, <laughs> it, it could be. Uh, <laughs> no reason at all, Max. Like, Max, that. Like, Max, that like, screw with his technical stuff, bro. Nah, he's nah, available. Nah. Man just gave him the job, did it? But he's available, nah. isn't it? For, yeah. for me, I think they try. I think Norwich is trying to change their approach mm. um, to how they're doing the yo-yoing about going down and going back up. I don't. Um, I don't. It, staying up will be a bonus, but if they go down, I I expect they're thinking that Dean Smith can build them back up yeah. and come up properly into the Premiership because their squad at the moment is a Championship squad. If they stay up, it's lucky. Yeah, so he he does he goes he goes down he does what he does with Brentford or what he done with Villa, build the club Whoa, up so it on. comes up. If if Norwich really. stay up, they're lucky. I think Dean Smith needs a medal if Norwich stay up. To be honest, no 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 no. I'm not saying he will need a medal, but what I'm trying to say in terms of their squad, their yeah, squad, squad is the championship. Weak. Their yeah. squad is weak. The championship okay. squad. So if they stay up, for me, he's done a fantastic job and they've been lucky for me. Mike, because yeah, school's mm. ball. Since since you're going since you since since you went you know yeah the guy was available wanted pension I don't want to talk about Dean Smith why, why, <laughs> why, talk why about do, the big boys why do you why do you think why do you think Lampard didn't take the job well mate I think looked at it and it's about his reputation <laughs> about his reputation isn't it look dead man is dead man walking let's be honest yeah unless you've got some unless you do some magic with that squad you're dead man walking so he's gonna go in there. Gerard's going to go Villa. He's going to do better than Lampard straight off the bat. There's no point. There's, there's no gain for Lampard. Lampard's never going to be banded about. 
if other jobs come up. There's other bigger jobs coming up eventually that Lampard can take at the start of the season or whatever. There's no reason to to take Norwich who are basically going to go down just because Gerrard's on the scene. It doesn't make no sense. Just rest yourself, do do your media things. Something else is going to come up, and then and then you're 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 in the hat again. He he he's good at like Mark said, he's good at star power enough, and he's English. Enough to, for him to be given a, a job somewhere else. If there's 19 teams in the league, or whatever, someone's going to lose their manager at some point. Maybe probably Conte at Tottenham, or whatever. So then, yeah, then you can go there. Simple. He, he didn't mention. He didn't mention. Wait, 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 wait. Let me go back to that. Look at look at me. Stick a pin in that social conversation, bro. Stick a pin. We're all coming back for that one. No, wait, no, no. <laughs> social. First of all, no, 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 no. say that with your chest. That first of all, Conte is not going to succeed. Because all I'm hearing is there's mad positivity from the camp right now, bro. So I'm waiting for my Sunday's game. Straight from Manchester, I'm going straight to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. You're going to catch me there, boy. Okay, and let's see what happens on the Monday, yeah? Uh, <laughs> you're not playing, no. You're not playing. Oh, we're coming to that later anyway. We're coming to that later. Yeah, but first of all, speaking about managers, I know the musical chairs are happening in the league. Um, of course, Gerard Villa, Dean Smith. So Conte, Conte has had what? Conte has... Started well. He's not, he now had two weeks break to relax and chill. And you've just mentioned about the positivity and the putting camp is happy. Hell in training. Sorry, he's putting them through drills in training, boy. Saying no. So we yeah. Kareem's yeah. looking over the wall. Kareem's looking over the wall. I'm over the wall, bro. Well, wait, bro. wait. Can I just say something? Can I say something? Why are you gassed about? Them doing double sessions in training as if that somehow translates to I want them to be running. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't even make sense. Well, I want them to be running. Well, yeah, they're doing shuttle shuttle runs all day long. So what? All day long. All day long. Is this really is your is your is your excitement really about them doing double (laughs) drills or because Kane scored a hat trick against a dead team? No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not obviously I wasn't even gonna mention that. I wasn't even I'm just gonna just use that. Because I just feel that it's it's too much of a it's too much of a hope right now. If he scores on the weekend, then what you don't yeah. want to celebrate your man? Three bad know, three bad boy goals. I'm not celebrating. Perfect hat trick. No I'm not celebrating just now okay. right now. Man. Okay, so, so Karim is taking Karim is taking the safe approach. He's happy that his team is finally developing some stamina. And um we he's he's looking forward to see what they're going to do on Sunday under the I'm great manager. Weekly. Well, I mean, we as we have seen, Gerard and Villa, Dean Smith's pension, as some people have said, and Conte, you know, bringing back the positive spirit. So now international week has just gone by, countries are, you know, qualifying for Qatar. AK, can you tell me what Southgate is doing for the likes of Harry Maguire to play well and score? Harry Kane, that everybody has been saying, oh, he comes too deep to score a hat-trick. Is it a case of the man management is wonderful, there's a brighter environment in England, or Albania will just crap? Um, I think... The latter. <laughs> can, we, can we switch topics now? The latter at the end. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, the, the opposition was very weak. I mean, it's, it's difficult to read so much meaning into what happened against Albania. I mean, Maguire has been poor, like, from last season. To this season as well, but then he scored the goal against Albania, and then oh, uh, we think he's excellent again. So, um, oh, sorry, Kate, okay. was it? My, my, was it sorry, last can I just say, Mike, 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 was you imitating? Was you imitating uh, my man? What's his name? Uh, Sunez. Sunez. No, 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 Maguire. <laughs> why, why did he do that for? Why did he uh, do that? For? We'll, we'll, I think I think we'll get to it in a minute. But go on, go on, What did he say? He said, um, "Who was it last? Was it two weeks ago that turned around and said that Maguire and Shaw was tired from Gary Neville? It was Gary Neville. It was Gary Neville. Yeah. Nonsense. English so what, they're not tired no more, I take it. They're, they're good. No, no, so that once they again, if, if, if you, you boys let AK answer the question, what is happening in the England Cup <laughs> that is making them so excited? I mean, it's, it's a breath of fresh air, opportunity to get away from the criticism from, from you know, um, your football your, your football fans, you know, stuff like that, from Sky, Sky Sports pundits and stuff like that. So, yeah, so for Harry Maguire and, and Harry Kane, it's an opportunity for them to... You know, weak opposition, you know, just score a few goals here and then, you know, get yourself ready for the upcoming league games. Uh, but I have a sneaky feeling that Hurricane is coming back to his best anyway. Um, I just think um, the whole transfer saga, you know, him not joining Man City, obviously made him... <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, made him very down. So I think is I think with his new uh, manager appointments as well, with Conte, see, I think Conte is very good with uh, working with number nines. Um, you know, we've seen what he's done with Lukaku as well, particularly. So I think he's going to, you know, bring out that beast inside Harry Kane. No, he, he won't bring out the beast. He'll just tell him to do what he's supposed to be doing in the first place. Just stay in the fucking box. Stop. You know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? <laughs> last season, last season, he was dropping deep. No, last Don't season, he was dropping deep. Don't matter. I think last season was his best season in terms of Don't goals. Matter. Actually, season. goals and assists as well. Come out. All, yeah, this yeah, Harry, yeah. all this Harry Kane business is down. It's annoying. Yeah. Because, Stay in the box, mate. Because the box. at the end of the day, this is a guy with ridiculous amounts of experience, brimming with confidence all the time. And we know that Harry Kane normally goes for a goal drought. So that always happens anyway, right? But he always finds his feet. You, we, we can't say he's down because Man City didn't sign him. That's weak. It's a weak argument for me, in my opinion. You know, left it, him, it, right? It, it, this a guy, human being. I mean, it's going to... But, but he was selected to be captain material for both club and country. So you can't be so... so you, well, I don't understand. All, you're, man, you're put in a position is, of leadership. Regardless of what reasons you think, the man, he, 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 he the one thing you're right about, he does have a good right. But some credit has to be given to Southgate and Thanos. What do you think? Because this player, I mean, look at Rich James. Rich James is in a different position and he was playing. I mean, he always plays well normally, most of the time. But there's something that happened in that England camp. Yes, the position is not as wonderful. The, the likes of Albania, San Marino, those kind of players. Yeah. However, <laughs> Southgate has to be given some sort of you know credit for this. Yeah, no, no. Southgate definitely gets some credit because the, his man management skills um, appear to work with the England crop. England players, he does seem to get more out of them when he needs to, and hence the reason why they got to the final. Um, he can make them play, and they play for him, and play for that group. So it's not surprising that people that are playing at um, poorly at club level can play a bit better for England. Um, he will offer them a bit more protection. Um, so yeah, I think it's a combination of man management skills and Albania being a poor opposition, really. England should be wiping the floor with them. These guys should be. Um, Harry Kane should score a hat trick against Albania. Harry Maguire shouldn't be tested defensively um, against Albania. It, the way he handled himself after scoring that goal was a bit poor, considering you're meant to be one of the more experienced and leaders of the team. Shouldn't it's be embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be getting. <laughs> shouldn't be getting sucked into that. Well, you just carry speaking, on. About, speaking about England, uh, of course, we've mentioned opposition, we've mentioned Sadgate being a good manager. I mean, Karim, you like this. Harry Kane has just scored four goals against San Marino and Harry and Harry Maguire wow. has scored the first goal. Mm. So, it's uh, England is currently leading 6-0. Oh, wow. so, against who? Against San Marino. San Marino. Okay. Sorry, that, that automatically now in Russia. Sorry, yeah. in, um, in Qatar. But, 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 but the thing is, that performance from Maguire means nothing if Man United get buried at the weekend. And if Harry Kane scores a zero in the Premier League yes, in the please. next game, this it, 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 it compounds what we were saying. It's just poor opposition. Also, as well, well, he should so, to be honest, Harry Kane shouldn't even have gone to there was no need for Harry Kane to even go to San Marino. No, he should have played uh, uh, Tammy Evermore or somebody else. Also, yeah. like, uh, maybe he's trying to get maybe Kit Southgate is trying to manage his confidence levels so that he plays well for club to cover. Well, play well, play well for play well for country. You go back to your club, you play well, you can bring that back to the country again, isn't it? But how does that? Maybe. So, what about uh, man them that that's not getting a chance then? And, and, and I don't think they really and, care. And, about and that. A, a, they don't care. About and and, a, and an opportunity to break Winnie's record eventually. Yep. Yeah. But the thing the thing with Southgate though, and that you mentioned, he does have the tendency to pick players whether they're playing for their club or not. But he also has the tendency to stick to particular players, regardless of what happens. Mm -hmm. So, um, Karim, I'm sure you're hoping Harry Kane takes this wonderful form against Albania and San Marino. Pretty well. And goes into the weekend. But then the last, the thing is, with Harry Kane and the way he's playing, last season he had his best ever season in terms of assists and goals mm -hmm. in the so-called drop, dropping deep. And Mike mm -hmm. has mentioned that Conte will, you know, stay in the box. Mm -hmm. With your style of play now, what do you think Conte will actually change that will make Tottenham better? Play three at the back. Um, we will allow Regulon and Emerson Royal to push up up the pitch more. I think he's going to give Ndombele a free roll uh, to make him the official playmaker, which I've been screaming that he needs to do for... I've never heard you say that, ever. Um, <laughs> kind, of, kind of time. And... Um, <laughs> Literally, ever. 
What, 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 you don't feel like... Let, I, I let, let him like finish, let him finish. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I feel that, yeah, man, I feel, I feel like he's just going to, he's just going to bring a spark into the team. Obviously, he likes players that don't just pass the ball back. When I went to go watch him in the in the Europa in the Europa Conference, he was literally screaming at them to move the ball forward and stop um, passing it backwards because he needs to just hit them on a counter attack. Um, so, what do you think about Romero, your centre back? Do you think he should I think, start? I think he's yeah. I think he should start. I think he's good. I feel like he's a great addition. He's a, so. Uh, what, what three centre backs are you going to start if you're Conte? If me, if I was Conte. I don't really like him at the moment, but I think he's our best option. Is Eric Dyer, um, Sanchez, and Romero. Okay. Sorry. First of all, Mike and Steve just killed me. Just <laughs> you should have you should have seen their faces. He, but he said, "No, no, Mike. He st- he started with I don't like him, but it's the option we have now." He said, "I want that guy out of my club." One of the episodes. I never yeah, 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 I did say that. I wouldn't. That's, that's who, wouldn't, not like who, who are we gonna play there instead? Rondo. Someone is Tankanga as well. Tankanga. And what's the Someone who's the, the, the Welsh boy, Rodden? Rodden. He's not ready, man. Wow. Well, now that now that we're going into formations and different things and looking at let's we'll go we'll go straight into the fixtures that are coming up this this weekend. International is over. We're going straight back into the Premier League to see some wonderful starts. So let's we'll, we'll start with a very crunch game. And I really like to know what you guys think will happen. AK, what do you think will happen between Norwich and Southampton? Easy man. Three new. To who? So it's, of course Southampton. <laughs> Wow. Wait, I don't, I don't, I don't, we are on the ascendancy, him, man. Ten I've points never seen him make a, I've never seen him make a statement on the program <laughs> with such a serious face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you don't think you don't think the rejuvenated the new style the Norwich new manager that didn't Smith, nah. that didn't Smith will, will make Norwich win against nah. our cousin? No, nah, not having that. Okay. So that's straight, so that's straightforward, not having that training. And and, no. and just and just in case Eric Dyer is watching it. I don't like him as a centre back, bro. I like him as a defended midfielder, but not as a centre back. Mm. <laughs> you Listen, you, you Eric, remember what Eric there, did to the guy to did to, did to one of the top you know, you know what so there, he there, has. There, there, the there's something he's doing right though, you know? because Mourinho, Nuno, and Conte have stuck with him as a, as a centre back. So there must be something he's doing right. But we don't know. No, no, we don't know. Conte is going to. We don't know if Conte is going to stick with him. Scott's only been there two weeks, man. So, so far, so far he's been playing. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Mark. Yes, sir. What education are you going to give to the Gunners at Anfield <laughs> this weekend? Um, Liverpool, 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 Arsenal, 5.30 kickoff, Anfield. How do you see that game going? Don't like Saturday games in the afternoon, you know. Um, uh, I mean, we're at home, so, you know, you could always depend on us to get a result at home, you know, like whether, you know, win or draw. Um, Arsenal are looking um, a lot more assured of themselves in terms of, you know, um, their, I won't even say attack, just their overall game. Um, I think they've got a lot of youth in the side, a lot of legs. Um, it, 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 it all depends on, it all depends on who's playing um, between our centre-backs and our midfield. Our midfield is the real problem. That's our real issue. We, if we've got Thiago and Fabinho back, I think that's a Liverpool route. If Fabinho or Thiago, one or the other or both, are out, then we could be in for a tough for a tough um, evening, um, to be honest. But I expect us to pull a result, whether it's a win or a draw. Let me ask you this, Mike. So for a long time, for a long time it's always been an imbalance when it comes to the Liverpool last night game in the midfield. But a lot of praise has been given to Lukonga, Pate, and the way they play the way they play in the middle right now, taking the ball forward. These guys are defensive; they can move forward. Do you think that game will be the battle in the midfield, or will it be a case of um, because both teams have wing backs that like to bomb forward? So, how tight do you think the game will be, or do you think whoever wins the midfield wins that game? I think if we stop Salah, we've got a chance. If we don't, it's, it's a loop time, basically. That's what I think because he's he's just arguably whatever he's doing in the middle or at the back, blah blah blah. It's not gonna matter. If Salah goes on one, he's he's the, he's the game changer. 
I can see I can see Mike's team talk. Listen, 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 listen. It's not about running tracks or running training twice. Stop, stop, stop that man. guy and then wow. you yeah, stop that guy and we're gonna win. Yes. Well, no win, but compete. Com- com- compete. But I mean we're a lot better now, so we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think regardless, Mark, you, you've had different midfields and you've still been playing well. Yeah, but you can see so. there's a there's a and and again we've got a midfield. It's crazy because last year we had a defense defensive crisis. Now we've got a midfield crisis. So um, it's quite easy to play against Liverpool um, at, at the moment if you know what to do, which is just pump the ball over the top, cut the middle out, and then just go. Yeah, but we don't play that. So, uh, well, well, and I was going to say, does Arteta? Do you know what I mean? Is is Arteta pragmatic enough to to kind of apply that? Um, and that may be where the game's won and lost, really. Mr. Thomas, what do you think? And first, can you actually tell me who you think is going to win? I mean, these boys have... They've, they've, I just told you Liverpool are going to win. What's wrong with you? No, I mean, I, what you said is if we stop Salah, we have a chance. That's not... I, 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 I said right. win or a draw. I said win or a draw. I expect I expect Liverpool to win, but I expect Arsenal to give a, a good account of themselves. It's going to be interesting to see the selection that Arteta makes, especially at left-back. Um, mm. If he brings in Tierney or if he sticks with Tavares, is party injured? Um, What's it? I don't know. I don't know. I think he, I think he's. I think he played during the week for Ghana. Um, big a key a key player for us is Gabriel playing left centre back because whoever's playing left back, he's gonna need to help them with Salah. Um, <laughs> we'll be Gabriel did nothing to Salah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be interested. No, no, but I mean, in terms of mastering that defence, it's not. It's not about necessarily stopping Salah the player but it's his run at making sure the left back's in the correct position you're in the correct position left centre back all that kind of stuff so he's going to have to have a big game um, mm. it's also going to be interesting to see what front three Klopp goes with if he goes with Salah, Jota, Mane or if he plays um, Firmino yeah. to occupy he's not going to play Firmino Firmino is injured to occupy he's injured, oh he's yeah. injured okay. as much okay so, so it's whether he, so the Arsenal centre back is not going to be as Maybe occupied. Open. Nah, not as yeah, occupied. So, so if he goes do, outside, do you want... outside perspective, outside perspective, Karim, what do, what do you see about the, for that game? And then when you're done, AK, tell me outside perspective. I think it's going to be a good game. First of all, I believe Liverpool are going to win it. Um, but I actually think it's going to be a good game. I do think Arsenal are going to step up, and they're not just going to get ran over, basically. Um, like Man did. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, um, it's going to be a cracking game um, I'm interested to see the strategy that Ateta is going to employ um, because this season uh, since Arsenal has come, on, come into form um, they've been playing with high intensity so it's interesting to see if Ateta is going to keep up with that intensity against Liverpool knowing that Liverpool is the king of Preston or whether he's going to retreat and try to counter-attack Liverpool. Um, when it comes to midfield, I don't really think Liverpool has been in midfield team ever with club. It's all about quick transition. So they play the ball really quickly in behind for Mane and, and Salah to run in behind and score. So we, irrespective of any midfield three Liverpool picks, it's all about getting the ball to Salah and Mane. Um, so if, Liverpool, if, if Arsenal plays very quick, very intense, and try to press Liverpool, um, it's going to be very interesting to see how they cope with Salah and Mane with all the spaces they're going to leave behind. I think they've got a bit. I think I think they've, I think Arsenal got a better chance pressing than retreating. If they retreat, Trent's going to kill them. I'm telling you, Trent 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 will de- Trent will destroy. Trent is our midfielder basically. He's our midfield creation, really. Um, well, so we shall yeah. see. However, I, I I wouldn't be surprised though if Arteta actually plays. Um, a bad man down the left and luck is it up top to give mm. Trent something to think yeah, about. Yeah, that will work. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Trent because if Trent knows if he goes forward and he can't leave a bad man, and then it's a battle of those two. Whoever gets the other one tracking back and Lacazette playing up top, he's gonna hold the ball better than anyone else. Yeah, right that's, there. That's, a, that's a good point actually because I've seen Lacazette give uh, Van Dijk problems before. So mm. yeah, that could work. To be fair, he can't leave ESR. They that gap because he's rapid as well, to be honest. Yep. Well, um, considering the fact that Marco Belsa is very good at letting his team chop a lot of goals, is this the best time for Tottenham to play Leeds on Sunday, Karim? How are you seeing that game? Three points to the to the three-point lane? Definitely. 
Uh, yeah, we, 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 um, I'm very confident going into that game. Um, probably the most confident I've been all season, really. With regards well, to like when you were going to play Man United, you were rubbing your hands there as well. No, he was happy that Man United got beaten. He wasn't confident. He said they would draw. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's going to haunt me forever that right? yeah. <laughs> only this season yeah. Oh, yeah, this <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah 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 I think um, yeah I think we, 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 we're kind of comfortable I feel like Harry Kane is going to get a goal Son's going to get a goal Wait. and Don Belli is going to play out of his skin have you noticed how every time Karim talks about Tottenham and Don Belli is always mentioned it's always yeah. something <laughs> that's he's a player he's a player, player. He's a player. Right. He's a player. Right. Right. the, the, the right. problem right. that Tottenham have this um in this fixture is that Leeds are like to run and Tottenham up until this point in the season they haven't like running and but they have so, been doing double training well we'll see if the double training has time to take effect <laughs> by the time this game comes around yeah they've been doing double training <laughs> Mike Mike what do you see how do you see that game Tottenham win? yeah Tottenham, Tottenham should win that Tottenham should win that game man at the moment Leeds are almost like they got found out or something. I mean they've got injuries as well I don't know but they're not playing to what they used to last season so Tottenham new manager bounce Probably Kane will be gassed off that flipping hat trick against San Marino, whatever, whatever. Conte is a good manager anyway, so I would expect to win. I'm not saying that they'll win with style, but I would expect them to get a three points, which is all that matters at the moment. But you know, when you're in crisis like that, you just need to get wins in it, Karim. So, yeah. Mark, what do you see? Yeah, I think it's a routine Tottenham win at the moment. A new manager. Um, a good manager at that, um, world-class, if you like, manager. Um, he's going to inject a bit of pace into those Tottenham players. They're not awful players, let's be honest. Um, no, they're, good. they're just, um, they've, they've not, they've been mismanaged and, you know, and um, just not really doing as much as they could do. So maybe Conte gets that out of them. Um, Leeds, like you said, have been shipping goals from the beginning of the season anyway, although they're very good on the attack as well. Um, I expect Conte to slip a goal in and kind of defend. I'm going for, what, 2-0. Go for 2-0 Tottenham win. All right. Um, Beke, considering the fact that we've talked about Gerard and what we see him doing or not doing, one manager we've always praised on grassroots charts is Graham Potter. And Aston Villa are playing Brighton. And that, how do you, do you see that as a good test for Stevie Gerrard? And do you see it as a winnable test? It's a very, very, very good test because um, as um, Brighton play very, very good attacking football. And um who's playing home again? Villa is a home. Villa is a home, okay. So yeah. So, the, 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 the fixture is easy on Gerard then. <laughs> so I think the home fans will get behind him. Obviously, it's his first home game. Um, I was going to go for a Brighton win, but because obviously it's um Gerard's first home game, so I'll just go for a draw. What do you think, Mike? What, uh, Villa and Brighton? Yep. Uh, yeah, Villa draw, draw, draw. I want to draw. 1-1 one, one or something like that. Thanos, what do you see Mr. Uh, Stevie G's first game to go? Um, <clears throat> I think it'll be a draw. Um, just because he's going to inject some more belief, in some belief into the players. Um, Villa's not a bad side already. I just... Even though Brighton's doing well, I just think that yeah, it'll be a draw. Hey, hold on. So are we saying that Brighton are that good that, that Villa Villa got some good players? None of us saying that Villa can actually do something with the players they got. They got some good players. No, no, um, they can they um, can, but it's a case of his it's his first game, isn't it? I'm looking at I'm looking at Villa's um next five fixtures and um it's a tough run. Um I honestly don't I think four points is the target really for the next five games. We're talking about Brighton. Um, at home, after that, they've got Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park, never an easy place to go to, um, with um, what um, um, Vieira's doing over there as well, big things. Um, then Man, Man City at home, allow it. Um, then you've got Leicester at home, uh, touchy game, you know, that can go either way again. And then Liverpool away. It's, it's, a game. it's a game, it's a game, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's their next five. So for me, four points. That's, from that's five a bunch is. is is reason this it's it's crazy to expect anything more if they get i'm not saying that they can't get anything more but i think yes gerard's too new to be able to implement his style but he will give them that new manager bounce um whether that's enough to get through do, these teams which are all quite solid and already on their path is another question that remains to be seen but like oh. i said four points is reasonable 
Four points. And of course, to kick off the back to the Premier League will be Leicester Chelsea, 12 30. Karim, what do you see with Leicester Chelsea? I see Chelsea win. Um, I still feel that uh, they're on a on a good pace and they have, and um, yeah, it's going to be a good game as well. But I definitely think it's just it's going to be a Chelsea win. Okay, Steve. Um, Leicester. Ooh, big, big I, I, reckon, I reckon I reckon they've got some of the tools that can trouble Chelsea. Um, the way they play, um, Telemans in the middle, Vardy in about it. Um, you know, Nacho, Harvey Barnes, um, Pereira at right back. I just think if um, Leicester get their defensive head back on again, I think they can give Chelsea some problems and actually come away with the three points. To be fair, Steve, Steve has had a very good record with his predictions. He has, uh, he has, he has been spot on pretty much. Look at him trying not to smile or feel himself. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to keep it cool. Like, yeah, yeah. I was waiting to the end of the season, man. <laughs> AK, what do you see? Leicester Chelsea? Uh, I agree with Steve. Uh, Leicester's going to win. Um, the last international break, uh, Chelsea really, really struggled against Brentford. Like, they were really, really lucky to win that game 1 0 uh, because they had so many players go on international break. The likes of Thiago Silva, uh, Brazil is playing Argentina tomorrow, I think. So, by the time these guys come back to England, um, uh, to, to chill does what he does best. He rests his players when they come back from international break. So I think that gives less than edge. We've got Vardy, who's hungry as ever. Um, he doesn't play for England anymore, so it's going to be fresh to deal with the Chelsea defence. And Mike, how do you see that game? Um, I think Chelsea is going to do it. But the guys are right in terms of Leicester have the ability to win that game. But I'm just going Chelsea at the moment because they're quite slow at the back. But I'd be factoring this national break, possibly. But I'm still going with Chelsea. And Mark? Um, I'm going with Leicester for the same reasons um, AK and Thanos um, said. Um, don't really need to add any more salt on top of it because they've said what I'm thinking, really. Um, I just think, um, yeah, yeah. I think, I think Leicester have the tools to trouble Chelsea. And Chelsea are probably due a bit of a... Um, upset to be honest hopefully so Liverpool maybe but <laughs> maybe maybe but yeah. you know maybe but but I'm just saying Southampton man and Arsenal man said the same thing so <laughs> <laughs> well ladies and gentlemen first of all Manic Max thank you very much for joining the grassroots panel thank you it was nice having a voice from Liverpool I'm sure you enjoyed hanging with the likes of Definitely, Karim man. Mike, Tanners, and AK. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Are you trying to close the show? We haven't spoken about Ole yet. I'm, 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 <laughs> that, that's true. Ole on the wheel. <laughs> on the wheel. L- listen, this is, what, this, is what, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Okay. We've finally managed, out of 14 episodes, to go on without actually talking about my United or mm-hmm. Ole. Let's just keep it nice and quiet and pretend that my United isn't even here this week. But you are, though. You're wearing the T-shirt. Why should you do However, that? however, when we beat Watford, on Saturday, Ole will be back on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Ole will be back on the wheel. What is the wheel connected to, though? That's what I want to know. Good question. <laughs> we shall find out next week. We shall find out next week. All right. Manic right. Max, thank you for coming to the Grassroots Channel. That's all, guys, man. Big up, Grassroots. All right. Thank you very much. Of course, Karen B, Mr. Talas, Mike N, yeah. AK47. Always a pleasure. See you soon. In a week that Harry Kane has found his scoring boots. Let's see if the extra running in Tottenham gives him the win. Ladies and gentlemen, another episode of Grassroots Chats. Good night.